So in this video, I want to talk about Euler's integral formula, or also known as Euler's integral of the second kind. And that says that n factorial equals the integral from zero to infinity of x to the power n e to the minus nx dx. Now, the usual way of showing this is to use repeated integration by parts. That's one of the most popular ways of proving this. Um, and it's also the way the gamma function is usually defined. And I'll provide links to some of these things in the description box below. So I'm going to show you a different way of proving this, which I think is rather nice. So the first thing I'll do is um, I'm going to take a to be some real number that's greater than zero. So it's just a positive number. And I want you to consider the following integral. So let's just scroll down. I want you to consider the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of minus ax dx. Now this is quite a simple integral. If I integrate this thing, I'm just going to get minus one over a e to the minus ax. So I'm going to get minus one over a e to the minus ax. And I want to evaluate this thing from zero to infinity. So I better put some brackets around this. And I want to evaluate this from zero to infinity. So what do I get? Well, I'm going to get minus one over a as my factor outside. Well, as x tends to infinity, what happens? Well, the, the, the index in the power um, gets very, very small. Since a is a positive number, minus a is a negative number. And I'm essentially going to get e to the power of minus infinity as x tends to infinity. And e to the minus infinity, well, that just tends to zero. I'm then going to subtract the value of this function evaluated as zero e to the minus a times zero, that's just e to the zero, which is e to the power of zero, which is one. So I'm gonna get e zero minus one. And zero minus one is minus one. Minus one times minus one is one over a. So what have we proved? We proved the following. We proved that as long as a is a positive number, then the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus ax dx is one over a. So that seems quite straightforward. And you might, you might be wondering, what on earth does, it have, does this have to do with the original integral? Well, I'm now actually going to differentiate. And I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to a. Now, if I differentiate the right-hand side like this, what does it mean to take the derivative of an integral? And if I do this, this to the left-hand side, I've got to do the same thing to the right-hand side. So I'll take the first derivative of this function with respect to a. Now, there's a, a really nice rule called Leibniz's integral rule, also known as differentiation under the integral sign, which basically says that under certain conditions under this integrand, I can take this derivative and bring it inside. And I'll provide a link to this in the description box below. There's a nice Wikipedia article about this. So what, what happens? Well, Leibniz's integral rule says that I'll get the integral from zero to infinity of the partial derivative of my function with respect to a. So the partial derivative of e to the minus ax with respect to a dx. And on the right hand side, well, the derivative of one over a with respect to a is just minus one over a squared. So let's examine what happens on the left hand side. Well, if I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to a, that means I'm assuming that x or minus x is just a constant. I can just treat it as if it were two or something. And if that's the case, when I differentiate this, I'm going to have to have a factor of minus x come down out front. So on the left hand side, I'll get the integral from zero to infinity of minus x times e to the minus ax dx. And on the right hand side, I'll just have my usual minus one over a squared. So that's what happens when I differentiate my original integral once. So I'm just going to write a little d by dA here just to keep track of what I've done. So what happens if I then differentiate both sides again? What happens? Well, if I differentiate both sides again, well, you notice that in exactly the same way, I'm going to have another factor of minus x coming down out in front. So I'm going to have minus x times minus x or minus x squared. So if I take the derivative of both sides again, I get minus x squared e to the minus ax dx. And on the right hand side, well, the derivative of minus 1 over a squared is just 2 over a cubed because I've got minus 1 times minus 2. So let's write that. So I've got minus 1 times minus two all over a cubed. And that's just two over a cubed. And likewise, I write a little d2 by d8 squared, just to keep track that this is the second derivative. 
So now suppose that I keep doing this. I keep, I keep finding a derivative of both sides. Well, if I were to do this n times, what do I get? What, what is the nth derivative of the integral of e to the minus ax? Well, if I differentiated n times on the left-hand side, I'd get the integral from 0 to infinity of minus x to the power n, because each time I differentiate, I get another copy of minus x out front, e to the minus ax dx. And what do I get on the right-hand side? Well, you notice when I calculated the first derivative, I got a negative number. When I calculated the second derivative, I got a positive number because minus 1 times minus 2 is 2. If I were to calculate the third derivative, I get minus 6 because 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So whenever I differentiate an odd number of times, I get a negative number. And whenever I differentiate an even number of times, I get a positive number. So a nice way of summing this up is just to write minus 1 to the power n. So whenever n is an even number like 2 or 4, this will just vanish, it becomes 1. And whenever n is an odd number, this just stays as minus 1. So what else do I get? Well, notice that when I calculated the second derivative, I had to multiply by minus 2. If I calculate the third derivative, I'll have to multiply by minus 3. The fourth derivative by minus 4, and so on and so forth. So I'll have to keep doing this until I get to n, the nth derivative. So I'm going to have a factor of n factorial here. In the denominator, what will I get? Well, after I calculated the second derivative, I got a cubed. So after I calculate the nth derivative, I should get a to the power of n plus 1. a to the power of n plus 1. Okay, so what can I do about this? Well, if I look closely, there are some nice things that I can do about this. First of all, there's a factor of minus 1 to the power n on both sides. So notice that if I write the left-hand side as minus 1 to the power n, x to the power n, e to the minus ax dx, that's going to be equal to minus 1 to the n, n factorial, divided by a to the n plus 1. Okay, well, I've got a power of minus 1 to the n on both sides, so I can just cancel these factors out. That's just a constant. It doesn't depend on x. And what am I left with? I'm just left with the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power n e to the minus ax dx. And that's equal to n factorial divided by a to the power n plus 1. And we're nearly there. All I need to do now is just set a equal to 1. So if I now set a equal to 1, what happens to both sides? Well, on the left, I will have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power n e to the minus x, because I'm just letting a be equal to 1, dx. And on the right-hand side, well, on the numerator of n factorial, the denominator is just going to be a to the power of n plus 1, which is 1 to the power of n plus 1, but 1 to the power of anything is always 1. So I'm going to divide by 1, which doesn't do anything. So this is the result I wanted to prove. n factorial equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power n, e to the minus x dx, which is quite nice. And this is sometimes called Euler's integral of the second kind. It's, usual, it's usually the way the gamma function is defined as well. And I'll provide links to those in the description box below. So that's my video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks.